Susie Lee running for Congress. All right. All right, thank you. Peter, thank you so much for having me. Uh, Peter and I have worked on several initiatives over the years, and why I'm running for Congress, I think uh, Senator Heller said it best, is that there's more good that can, there's more good than bad. Um, I've had a career here in Southern Nevada, 25 years of service to our community. Uh, I grew up, I'm one of eight kids from Canton, Ohio. My father, years I've been the president of communities and schools in which we worked uh, strongly with the Latino and Hispanic community, making sure. Uh, I, I'll mimic uh, Senator Heller's sentiments in that the Latino business community is the largest growing sector of small businesses in our community, almost doubling uh, from 2007 until 2014. Uh, so when we talk about economic development, economic diversification, and making sure people have jobs, have jobs that pay the bills, it's really the Latino community that is at the forefront of making sure that happens. So I think it's uh, incredibly important, and I'm sure we're going to talk about ways to make a, a Latino businesses even more. Well, let's get right into that. It's okay. going to be next up. Is A, they're, uh, they don't have the access, so they tend to more... Um, readily go after the payday loans and get stru stuck into the, the predatory lending cycle, which then makes them less likely to be successful. Another issue that I think is important too, and one I'd love to work together and train uh, businesses on, is the use of technology. When you talk about looking at ways businesses can access different types of uh, capital, uh, a lot of it's done through the internet and online, and a lot of uh, Latino-owned businesses are less, small businesses are less likely to do their bookkeeping and things online and or on the computer. So making sure we're setting up those training programs and, and really educating small businesses on just, you know, really, it's not, I wouldn't say it's simple because if it were simple, it'd be done, but it's an education process, and so I think that's a really important part. Absolutely. Let me ask you, would you consider yourself a business-friendly Democrat? Absolutely. Um, and why do you say that? Well, What's your background? I mean, first of all, I, as I told you all, I've started several businesses. They've been nonprofit businesses. But even with that, you have the pressure of going to sleep at night and making sure you're meeting payroll. You want to make sure that you're sustaining what you've promised. If you've given someone a job, you want to make sure that they have a job after a year, uh, you're dealing with health care costs, you're dealing with changes and regulations that impact. Now, you know, for me, it's not impacting my bottom line, but it's impacting my ability to deliver more services to our community. If I'm paying more in payroll and administrative costs, that means less that I'm delivering uh, to the community. So as a person who has started businesses and led businesses, and more importantly, grown them, I understand the pressures that so many businesses are under. Yeah. And, and obviously with Latino chamber uh, representation on that as well. Excellent. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the $15 an hour also. Um, I know that's more of a state issue, like the Senator pointed out, but I'm, I, I'm curious your feeling on it. Um, again, you know the Latin chambers, um, we focus on bigger numbers than that. We want, we want the freedom to think bigger than $15. I understand. Listen, we're at low unemployment. You would think that wages are automatically going up. I beg to differ. I don't think they're automatically climbing. And the minimum wage is not necessarily what businesses attain, you know, strive to. It's actually to protect our most vulnerable. Over half the people who earn uh, minimum wage are under the age of 25. 62% of them are females. So one in six children is born into poverty in our country. So when we're talking about minimum wage, it's protecting those most vulnerable. I support increasing the minimum wage, but I also understand the impact it has on small businesses and making sure we're doing it in an approach and dealing with regional differences and industry differences to make sure that we're not deleting those very jobs that we're trying to protect, but also making sure we're still protecting the most vulnerable. Excellent. So we got, and 
and what are you going to do about it? Well, this is actually a very significant difference between me and my opponent, Danny Tarkanian. Uh, he supports Yucca Mountain and developing Yucca Mountain. I do not. I look at this as an area where we, as a delegation, need to be a solid wall on this idea. And it's not to me, it's an economic, it's just an economic choice for our state. I mean, thinking that uh, the driver of our economy in Nevada is the strip right now. And having uh, nuclear waste going on the train tracks that have a radiation field that encompasses the strip, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. There's gonna be a major catastrophe that's gonna sink the state. So I'm not in favor of becoming the nation's uh, dumping ground for nuclear waste. And I think that this is an area where we must have bipartisan, you know, we must be solid in a bipartisan, uh, you know, op opposition to this. And the chamber stance is, there are states that want it really, really bad. Right. Texas wants it really, really bad, so why not let Texas have it? I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about uh, marijuana real quick. Like I said earlier, marijuana, the people have spoken. Um, what we're going to see next, the next is we're going to start reading about, you know, uh, dispensary owner getting murdered, getting robbed, um, and crime. You know, that's going to happen. I mean, I, I happen to know that it has happened already. It are, yeah, yeah it's already and it doesn't get in the paper too much, but it's right. already happening. And uh, I'd like to know how you feel about that industry. Um, and hopefully you want to start taking those taxes that and they're paying. Put them into education. And put them into education. They belong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm fully in support of the marijuana industry. And I think that obviously we need to do something from a federal level and i agree if we can't get it on at a federal level making sure we have banking access um, you know listen like gaming we are at the forefront of an industry and we led the way we know how to regulate we set the model we are the state for setting the model for regulating the gaming industry we can be the state and are the state on how we adequately deal with the marijuana industry and, and banking's the number one issue. So access to capital. We know that as good as things are right now and our Nevada economy is booming, there's cranes everywhere, uh, we still know that small business has a problem getting access to capital. And if we were able to get more capital, small business, more risk and to the risk takers, uh, I think it would create even more of a boom and more jobs. How can you as a congresswoman help us with that? Again, I think a lot of this is through education and obviously being having an open door for small businesses. But also one thing, um, a lot of businesses don't understand the steps you need to take to be like bond ready and capital ready and making sure that we're helping them get on those steps. And, and you know, when you start a small businesses, you love to cook or, you know, you're, you're an accountant or you want to open up a hair salon uh, and then you know whatever it is then you become successful and then you want to expand you know a lot of small business owners go with what their entrepreneurial heart is but let's get also put in training with them to understand that here you are now and let's think about the steps you need you want to be at in case you do want to expand, you want to expand how big you are, et cetera, and so that you have in place what you need uh, to get that access. I know you have a real passion for education, there's no question about it. And the, at the Chamber, we've, talk, we've been talking a lot more about there is a serious connection between education and the business community, right? The communities around the country that spend more on their education uh, make more in the community. There's more dollars floating in the community. So tell us about how you would connect education and the small business community together. Okay. Uh, obviously, education has been at the forefront of what I've done for 25 years. <clears throat> when I moved here 25 years ago, the first thing that struck me about Nevada is we're a boom-bust economy because we rely on one industry. And how are we going to attract other businesses? The number one issue is education. 
And again and again, you'll hear whether it's businesses who want to come here, they look at our education system and they say, I'd rather go somewhere else. And it's not just for the employees that they have, it's for attracting well-trained new employees. And, you know, I was in Boulder City a couple weeks ago and talked to a great couple. They own a rental, um, a machine rental uh, business in North Las Vegas. They can't find enough well-qualified employees. So not only do I believe in, you know, obviously investing in K-12 to and higher education, but, you know, everyone doesn't need a four-year degree. We can, and we, I do believe that Nevada has been in the leadership role. So tell us why you over your opponent, and tell us what your first 60 days, 90 days will look like. Oh gosh, well, listen, I think that there's a clear difference between me and my opponent, Danny Turkanian. I have been in this community for 25 years. From the minute I stepped foot here, I looked around at what the major issues facing our community were. I wasn't afraid to reach out. And by the way, I believe this is one of the greatest communities in the world. We are the center of innovation. We are the, I mean, you know, I come from Canton, Ohio, where the economy just shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. My dad was laid off from a steel job at the age of 56, could never find another job. You know, we think about the recession that we went through and how now, you know, eight years later, or 10 years later, we are now on the cusp of another strong growth spurt. But making sure we can sustain that growth and that everyone benefits that is uh, important. But so I, I, that was a whole side step there. Uh, let's we get back to the meat of this. I have been here for 25 years on the ground. Not only that, working together with people, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. If there's a problem, we gotta work together to address it. And whether it was homelessness or, you know, we started the inner city games when gang violence, gang violence is still an issue, but it was major. We didn't have any services for that. Or our dropout prevention program. I've had a career of not only not being afraid to get the job done, but actually getting the job done. And I'm running against a guy who has run for six offices on and off since 2004. And not only that, uh, he comes to this with uh, a track record of shady business deals. And I have major concerns with his ethics. And, um, you know, I just think it's a clear decision that people have to make where I am a person who will get on the ground, get the job done, and produce results, or someone who has shown that he has consistently failed at what he's tried to do, which is run for office, uh, and also shown some ethical issues with the business dealings he's done. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Susie Lee. prosper and uh, take care of our families and, and that's the key that's the goal that's what we're trying to do here today and what we're always trying to do why I'm running for Congress I think uh, Senator Heller said it best is that there's more good that can, there's more good than bad I've had a career here in Southern Nevada 25 years of service to our community well this is actually a very significant difference between me and my opponent Danny Tarkanian uh, he supports Yucca Mountain and developing Yucca Mountain. I do not. I look at this as an area where we, as a delegation, need to be a solid wall on this idea. And it's not to me, it's an economic, it's just an economic choice for our state. I mean, thinking that uh, the driver of our economy in Nevada is the strip right now and having uh, nuclear waste going on the train tracks that have a radiation field that encompasses the strip. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. There's gonna be a major catastrophe that's gonna sink the state. So 
I'm not in favor of becoming the nation's uh, dumping ground for nuclear waste. And I think that this is an area where we must have bipartisan, you know, we must be solid in a bipartisan, uh, you know, op opposition to this. And the chamber stance is, there are states that want it really, really bad. Right. Texas wants it really, really bad, so why not let Texas have it? I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us why you, over your opponent, tell us what your first 60 days, 90 days will look like. Oh gosh, well, listen, I think that there's a clear difference between me and my opponent, Danny Turkanian. I have been in this community for 25 years. From the minute I stepped foot here, I looked around at what the major issues facing our community were. I wasn't afraid to reach out. Well, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. If there's a problem, we gotta work together to address it. And whether it was homelessness or, you know, we started the inner city games when gang violence, gang violence is still an issue, but it was major. We didn't have any services for that. Or our dropout prevention program. I've had a career of not only not being afraid to get the job done, but actually getting the job done. And I'm running against a guy who has run for six offices on and off since 2004. And not only that, uh, he comes to this with uh, a track record of shady business deals. And I have major concerns with his ethics. And, um, you know, I just think it's a clear decision that people have to make where I am a person who will get on the ground, get the job done, and produce results, or someone who has shown that he has consistently failed at what he's tried to do, which is run for office, uh, and also shown some ethical issues with the business dealings he's done. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Susie Lee.